We have an imposter among us. Hey folks, we are back with another video, and today we will be doing a full service on a Fox non-factory Float 34 Fit 4 fork. Why do I say non-factory? There's a bit of a story behind this fork over here. So a friend of mine who I had recently met and I'm uh, sort of doing some work on his bike had sent this fork in, I don't remember if he said it was last year or the year before to Fox to completely service the whole thing. And turns out they it had a, uh, a dent, I guess, in his lower boot, not even a big one, he says, and they literally refused to work on the shock unless they replaced the entire lower boot. So he ended up agreeing to it and they serviced the shock. Altogether, the job cost him nearly 500 bucks, which is just crazy. Um, and he gets it back, right? And he gets back with factory float stickers. This, based on the serial number, is a Performance Elite Series fork. So I just find it comical that Fox was the ones that actually changed the whole bottom boot out, and yet they ended up using factory stickers for a Performance Elite Series shock. I mean, fork. I mean, I don't know. I just find that comical. Somebody else, I'd understand it, but coming from Fox like that, uh, it just seems like it would go against some kind of policy, I guess. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. It's just funny. But anyway, we're going to be doing a full service on this guy over here, okay? So we are going to be doing a 50-hour. We're going to be doing the full air spring and, again, a full damper. The difference with this guy over here is he has a remote control, uh, remote top, basically. So that will be something different. And the damper bleed on this guy here, as opposed to the one that I had already posted, is going to be slightly different when it comes to the actual bleed. Because of a year, this is a 2018, we're going to have to do a bit of a different process than we did with that previous fork, which I believe was a 2021. Yeah, it was a 2021 Fox Factory. All right. So uh, with that being said, let's go on to the tools needed for the job. As for tools, I'm gonna break it out into three sections. One, 50 hour service. Tools you're gonna to need for a 50 hour service. Two, 50 hour service plus the air spring only. And then three, 50 hour service, air spring, and the tools for the damper. That's if you're gonna do a full service like we are going to do over here, okay? So let's start off with the 50 hour service. Everything you need here is what you're gonna be need, or you see here is what you're gonna be needing for the job. So for starters, if you have a little plastic cup like this, you get them at a dollar store, three for like a buck or something, or buck 25 now. Uh, we could use this to take the foam rings and saturate them with uh, 20 weight oil, okay? Prior to doing the job this way, when we're ready to finish up the 50 hour, we know that our rings are fully saturated, all right? But to start the actual dismantling, first what we are gonna need is a two millimeter Allen okay, to remove the rebound knob. Then we're gonna have to loosen the screws underneath the boots, right? We're gonna need a 10 millimeter hex and a 15 millimeter hex with a ratchet. Now these tools technically, in my opinion, are optional. They do make a little a life a little bit easier. They help you separate the internal shaft from the lower boot, okay? You can make your own with couplers where you could grab a screw, put on a coupler, then the other side of the coupler would screw onto the shafts. I'll try and get you the sizes for building that on your own. <clears throat> Definitely a lot cheaper than buying these. These I bought aftermarket, they're not actually Fox, so those are too expensive. And basically a mallet would be used to tap the shafts into, or yeah, into the boot. So at that point we removed the lower boot we need to remove the wipers. I use these plastic coated tire irons. I think they work great. I've never had one chip uh, fork boot since I've started using these years ago, all right? So we need a pick to remove the seal from the inside, all right? So at that point, we have our seals. Uh, we gotta clean, I mean, we gotta clean the inside of the boots, right? So that's where dowels come into play and alcohol and paper towel, all right? So um, then we have to put the new wipers, the O-rings, we, we will put the new foam rings back in, we gotta put the wipers in, 
and to put the wipers in, it is much easier with a tool that's specifically designed to install wipers, all right? You could try and put it on your own otherwise, but you take the risk of damaging the wiper, most importantly, damaging the rings, the little, uh, the, the springs around the wipers. You do not want to damage those springs. They actually do serve a big purpose, okay? So at that point, we put the fork back on, or the lower boot back on the fork. Then we need to fill up the bottom with uh the the bottom boots with oil 20 weight oil is what we are going to need as for the actual um seals 8030945 is the seal kit from fox for the 50 hour sram butter slick oleum um uh, slick honey whatever your preference is any kind of uh, shock grease um you will need for the job. So, uh, and a shock pump basically to fill it back up when you're all done. All right, so that's the 50 hour stuff. Now let's go into the tools needed for the air side service. As for the air spring side, you are gonna need all the tools that was mentioned for the 50 hour service, but I forgot to mention in the 50 hour service that you're gonna need an oil pan in order to put the oil from when you remove the lower boots, right? Or somewhere to put the oil, it's gonna wanna make a mess. So definitely wanna, uh, keep that contained and we're also going to need a torque wrench in order to torque everything down, right? So uh, as mentioned everything else applies from the 50-hour service. So for the air spring service We will be needing a 26 millimeter chamferless flat Socket, okay, make sure it is flat no concave or beveled edge basically on the inside because you risk Stripping the bolt on your air cap. Okay, so 26 millimeter chamferless we're gonna need a vise, a uh, vise, a clamps, and a vise. Uh, you're gonna need a vise and clamps, basically. I just don't remember if we needed the 10 millimeter or the nine millimeter. I don't remember top of my head. We'll figure that one out when we get there. And from there, we might need some heat in order to remove a nut so we could remove the air spring piston, right? And to remove that nut, we're gonna need a 12 millimeter wrench. And then to tighten back up after, we're gonna need a 12 millimeter crow's foot, okay? So at that point, we're gonna need a pick. To remove seals, we need a seal kit. Seal kit for the air spring side, 8030963. All right, we're gonna need grease, paper towels, alcohol to clean everything, grease to grease everything back up. Then when it comes time to put that air spring piston back in, you could try and do it without uh, this bullet. This bullet, basically inside, one of the seals we're gonna change inside that, that piston, that air spring piston is a quad seal. And the quad seals have sharp edges essentially, or harsh edges. And the shaft that we have to slip it over also has harsh edges. And it's very possible that you could rip, tear, or damage that quad seal, right? That's where these things come into play. They narrow down so it allows the quad seal to go inside, then it spreads it in order to go over the shaft evenly, right, without damaging it. So sometimes those seals will slip right in, other times they're very difficult, and if you try and wedge it in, you really do take the risk on tearing that seal, right? So this bullet, I'll get you the part number um, in the description section. So Loctite Red to lock down the bolt that holds the shaft together there, and a torque wrench. That's all the tools we need for the air spring. Okay, next let's go into the damper side. For the damper, you are gonna need all the tools of the 50 hour service, right? <laughs> and then we're gonna need, again, a 26 millimeter chamferless socket. Make sure it's chamferless. There's no bevel, just flat, okay? So we could take out the damper. We are going to need a bench, a uh, bench, a vise with shafts. We're gonna be needing, I believe, both the eight millimeter and the 10 millimeter on this one. I'm pretty sure it's the 10 millimeter. I'm just not sure if it's the eight millimeter as well. We'll find out, but I'm pretty sure it is, right? And we're gonna need a 19 millimeter wrench in order to separate the bottom half from the top half. And then later on, we're gonna need a 19 millimeter crow foot to put it back together and torque it down. We are gonna need picks. We are going to need a six millimeter he hex in order to remove uh, the separate the top half of the shock uh, within itself, basically, right? To take out the shims and change a couple of seals in there. Uh, we might be needing this two and a half millimeter to put something back together, but not guaranteed, right? So then we're gonna need a very small, and when I mean very small, 
just to give you an idea, this pick is too big. That's how much smaller this thing is, right? Uh, to take out this little clip on the top in order for us to do a bleed, okay? So a real, real small pick, very, very thin to take out this circ clip that's extremely tightly uh, put in there. I wish they came up with a better solution for that. So I'll show you later. And we're also gonna need a magnet to catch it as well as the magnet to take out the bearings from when we take out that essentially what, well, the actual lockout mechanism basically, right? So on the bottom side, we are going to need nine millimeters to remove the bolt holding the uh, head of the, the rebound head basically, and then change the seals on that. Well, we're gonna have to change the rebound head and to put it back in. Again, there's another bullet, this is, I believe a 10 millimeter bullet to put it back in and we're gonna need Loctite Red again to seal it all down. As for the, oh, here it is. As for the seal kit for this guy, it is part number 803-00960 and we will be needing five weight R3 fluid, okay? And ultimately you don't have to use this hose. You could, sorry, you don't have to use this syringe. You could use uh, a different syringe if you want, but again, this thing is held on by, uh, well, rubber hose essentially, right? Or silicon hose. So uh, I believe it's 5 sixteenths. So um, yeah, this, they sell it basically. This is from Fox. Um, eh, I think it's pretty crappy to be honest, but it does the job to a certain extent. So you could go to the dollar store, pick one of these guys up to help you, help you fill with oil basically, as opposed to using this. Cause this by mistake, if you make a mistake, you can make a mess. Whereas this is a lot more controlled to fill with oil. You're gonna need alcohol and paper towels. And once again, we are going to need a torque wrench. So that's it for all the tools. Uh, lots of tools over here. It is a more involved job on this particular year of damper for uh, the Fox float. And, uh, but we'll get through it all, all right. Let's uh, start taking apart a fork. Okay, before we start, make sure that you clean the fork real well, all right? Especially these little areas in here, if dirt builds up or collects, or even within the bottom over here, because uh, last thing you want is dirt to get inside. It will, it will basically destroy your fork. Even though we're gonna clean it, if you miss something and it falls inside and you don't know about it, it, it could be a world of hurt for you, all right? So something simple, but let's not forget to do it, all right? So first things first, we're gonna write down the existing settings. So I'm gonna take out the cap. We're gonna plug in. shock pump and it is telling me about 90 let's say 97 somewhere there now we did lose a little bit so let's say 97 98 that's a safe bet all right so air let's say 97 to start with then we're going to do compression counterclockwise and this one's already at the end so one big fat zero now we are going to do rebound. Now rebound from the bottom, we want to do it counterclockwise, right? Like this. So count the clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Yep, seven clicks, okay? Next, we want to take out the air. So to do that, I'm gonna grab a little bit of paper, grab anything that you know fits inside to uh, the, the, the valve. Paper is to stop any kind of oil mist coming out. You do not want to breathe that stuff in, all right? And do it slowly, don't do it quick. Not do it quick. You want to empty out both chambers at the same time. See what I mean? You don't want to breathe any of that. Squeeze it together. Try and squeeze it all the way to the top. Do yourself a favor. Put it to the ground and do it. All right. It's a little bit hard for me to show you here, but ultimately, let's see if this will work for me. What I'm going to do is just. I'm sure this can be blurry for you, but I'm just gonna press this down. 
until it's all the way. And then let go, boom. And then we'll do that one more time. All the way down and let go. Now we should be good. Next, what we're gonna wanna do is soak our foam rings. So we're gonna take them, we're gonna put them in a little jar just like this. And then we're gonna fill them up with 20 weight gold. This one's a brand new bottle. Okay. Whatever's left over, we're gonna use anyway later on, we're gonna suck it into the fork. Or suck it up and put it into the fork. So squish them down, compress them, and let them absorb as much as possible. We, we want these things totally saturated. The more, the merrier. All right. I'm gonna take this guy, we're gonna cover him and put him on the side somewhere where we can't spill him. Okay, next we're gonna take out the rebound knob. Two millimeter hex wrench. Unthread them, do not fully remove them. Just loosen them to a point where the rebound knob comes off. All right, and we had already taken our rebound knob and put it in the fully open position. There we go, take it, put it on the side. Do not lose it. Then we're gonna grab a 15 millimeter with a ratchet. Make sure it's on the loosen. We're gonna take this guy, use the table as leverage. There we go. Okay. This one. Then we will take the 10 millimeter and do the other side. And again, use the table as leverage. There we go. Screw on the side, do not lose them, or nut, this nut. Put him on the side, do not lose them, okay? So now, again, we have our shafts and they stick out, right? And we have the threads. That's where these tools over here come in handy. Okay, so what we do is we take one of them and we screw it in about, let's say, three full turns, four full turns. Okay, then, actually I'll do the other one too. Right there. Then we just give them a little tap. The goal here is to separate the shafts from the lower legs. All right. There we go, that one just separated. I'm pretty sure this one just separated too. This one undoubtedly separated. I could have sworn I cleaned it better than that. All right. There we go, we just separated as well, yep. Okay, now we need an oil bin. Stand these guys up and we are fully separated. Okay, now let them sit inside an oil pan for a little bit. Stand them up if you can, let them empty them out. So we have separated the top from the bottom. The top we are not gonna need now. What we're gonna do is first, take apart the bottom, clean it all out, and prep it to be put to back together, uh, put back together as if we were to do a 50 hour service. Now, in my case, I will be replacing the wipers. You could technically save your wipers, right? And leave them in here and wash them around. But at a minimum, you would need to remove these white foam, these foam rings in here, okay? So, wow, these are pretty dirty, man. Wow. Okay. Oh, these really are dirty. So, technically, if you want to save your wipers, you could do so. Just clean very well around them, and then we have to go inside and clean the tube like we will right now, okay? 
Uh, the only recommendation I have is if you're going to save your wipers, take out these springs. So this way uh, you won't damage them just in case, right? So because these things here, I mean, they're, they're, you, you need them. There's a purpose behind them. Now, if you plan on keeping your wipers, inspect them. Make sure there's no cracks on them. They're not like uh, warped in any single which way or form. Make sure they're round. They need to be round. But in my case, I'm going to be taking these guys out. And to take them out, I'm going to use a as I mentioned, a tire lever. And basically we got to go underneath the wiper. The only thing is it's a little hard doing it on a table at this height. It's a lot easier when I do it on the ground. A little much more leverage. I don't know how much you'll be able to see that actually. And I got to do it on an angle. Great. So basically I'm going to put it underneath and come on. It'll be a lot easier for me on the ground, guys. I'm going to do it on the ground. Get out of the way. One and world of difference sorry about that but it's a lot easier on the ground uh, this is just way too high to get leverage so basically again you put the tire iron tire lever underneath and flick it up okay these guys are garbage i'm gonna put them on the side for me this is all garbage put that on the side don't need that anymore so now it's a question of cleaning these things so what i do is I grab a wooden dowel. Well, actually, before I do that, uh, what I do is take alcohol, cover the hole at the bottom, and spray it real, real well from every angle. Right? We want everything to go down through the holes. When I do that, and I shake it. The whole idea is to break up the old oil that's in there and have it all come out. We're going to do this a couple of times. All right, just like that. And we will do it again. I got to get my other bottle of alcohol. This one's done. That's because I fell over and it spilled. Great. Well, I'm going to have to go get another bottle of alcohol. Okay, I'm back. I'm just going to empty out this bottle. In here. There we go. Shake them out real good. And pour them out. Okay. Then, I like these square dowels. I just find it gives it more, um, I don't know, just more grip overall. Okay, and then what I do is I put a rubber band and I forgot to bring out my rubber band. Great. So I grab a rubber band, around twice, and I tear out a couple of corner, a couple of sides, right? Spray this guy down, a new bottle of alcohol. Then we go in there. First I start clockwise, and then I turn it counterclockwise and try and mop up what I can. Holy cow. And I got real dirty in there. All right. So we're going to do that once. I'm going to do that twice. Take this out. Replace it with a new one. Bandit. One, two, tap it open, spray it down, and then put it in there and do it again. Make sure you let it sit at the bottom so it soaks up whatever's at the bottom. That's where most of the crap is going to be anyway. Okay, and we can do is take a little clean part, clean the edges out here. Make sure you clean all that so it doesn't fall back in, right? Take alcohol, spray it in there, let it pour down as opposed to fall in. Okay, 
So basically, I'm not gonna do both sides, but you get the idea. Fill it up with alcohol, well, don't fill it up, but put a good amount of alcohol in there, shake it once, empty it out. Do it again, shake it twice, empty it out. Wrap this, wrap a dowel with a paper towel, put a band on it, tear it open a little bit so you get more of a mop-like action. Go in there, let it soak up from the bottom, then turn it around side to side, side up and down, and grab out whatever you can once, do it twice, and then look inside, and by the time you're done, it should be spotless in there, all right? So I'm gonna do the other side so the camera doesn't overheat, I won't record it, and I will be back when I'm done. So we cleaned out the insides, they are spotless, right? Now, if you were to do the 50 hour service, give the alcohol a little bit of time to evaporate from all surfaces before closing this thing up, putting oil in there, right? You do not want alcohol mixing with oil. But since we have this open, what we wanna do is look inside, preferably with light at the other side, right? And check the bushings to make sure that there is no uh, rubs, wear, or any kind of odd marks on this bushing and the other bushing, which is down here essentially, right? So we wanna make sure they're in good condition. These to me look like they are in good condition, no issues. So this one might have a little bit of a mark, but I don't think so actually, that might be a shadow. So uh, we are good to go. So for now, I'm just gonna put this on the side. This guy's cleaned. Now let's work on the rest of the small parts to prep them. So these are the bottom caps, what we're gonna do is on the bottom of each cap, there's gonna be a crush washer. I'm gonna clean this out real well. Okay, there's a replacement crush washer in your kit and we will be using that one instead. Okay, so this guy is clean. Now let's clean this guy out too. So oh, this guy pop out. Oh, there it is. That's what I thought. So that's the other crush washer. Clean the seat around it. Okay. Actually, there's a lot of dirt on the inside where the threads are. Just clean the threads, make sure the threads are clean inside. All right, that guy's clean and we have our rebound cap. Clean them out on the inside since we're here. <laughs> and that guy's clean, whoop, sorry about that. So these two crush washers get replaced. We have our kit. Let's find them and we will put them on the side. It's gotta be one. And nope, that's not the other one. Where, oh, there's the other one. This has to be the other one. This is definitely the first one, right? Yep. Cool. So, the new ones, we'll put inside them for now, keep them together. The old ones, we toss out. Okay. That takes care of that part, right? So, next step, if you were to do the 50-hour service, would be to assemble everything all right put in the wipers put put in the foam rings put in the wipers um attach it all together oh you know what our sag ring we have to take out our sad rear our sag ring there's another sag ring in the kit we are going to replace it so um i'm gonna assemble it after so uh, as if we were to do again the air spring and the um the damper okay and then assemble it all together so if you were just doing your 50 hour you could just jump from here to let's say three sections from now which is the assembly of everything all right next up we will take apart the air spring for the air spring first thing first we need to take out the top cap that we're going to need a 26 millimeter chamferless flat socket now this might be a little bit difficult depending on how tight it was 
torque down. Okay, so just be careful with it. Use the table as leverage. There we go. shock solution better than this. All right, and we have three tokens in here. Okay, we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna put it on the side because he has a seal that we need to change. Next, we are going to take out the clip on the inside in order to remove the piston, right? Now, if you look at the clip, I don't know if you can see it well, there's a flat side here and then a lifted side here. And what we want to do is go underneath the lifted side with a flat, if you have a flat metal pick like this, just go underneath the lifted side and just lift it up. Mm. Just like that, boom. Put that on the side. Then inside we have another washer. Put this guy out, put him next to him over here. All right, and now you should be able to pull out our air spring, okay? And the inside is completely hollow. So now that we have the air, oof, stinks. Now that we have the air spring out, let's grab some paper towels and take out all that old grease. Just clean them up for now. We have a few seals we need to change over here. And we have to remove this piston. We need this shaft very clean. So we're gonna do a spray that shaft down with alcohol. Cause he's gonna go in a clamp. All right. We have to change out a seal here too. Okay, let me uh, pull out my, actually before I do that, first we're gonna clean the inside of this guy just to get him out of the way. So the best way we could do that is grab a paper towel and a dowel First I'm gonna clean the threads here. Clean the threads if you can. All right, now grab a paper towel, bunch them up real good. The messier, the better. All right, stick them down. Take the dowel, put them through the other side. Do that again. It overheated pretty much when I was done cleaning out the inside. That's pretty self-explanatory. Take a look inside when you're all done. Make sure there's no scratches in there. Make sure everything looks nice and clean, all right? If it is, you're good to go to the next step. So the next step is we are gonna start servicing all the seals. We have a seal here on the head, a quad ring. Then we have a seal out here, a seal over here, and a seal on the inside. And that's the really important one. In order to get to it, we gotta remove this guy in order to remove the piston to replace that seal, okay? So, and we will probably need heat to do that. But for starters, what we're gonna do is remove this seal so we don't burn it on there. All right, actually, let me get the metal one that's on metal. Come on, crying out loud. Mm. Now it's gonna make me go get the other one. Come on, dummy, get under there and get out. Thank you. All right, leave that on the side. We need to replace it. Spray this guy down real well. Clean him of all grease. Then we're going to put them in a 10 millimeter. Okay. 
just like that. Okay, then we are gonna put heat on him. Okay, we will be needing our 12 millimeter wrench, but we will be needing a little bit of heat. Just a little bit. Done. Just to warm up the Loctite that's there and unscrew him as he's turning. The whole thing's turning. Might need a little bit more heat, but we're gonna clamp this guy down. There we go, he's loose. And we loosen him. Okay, leave him with the O-ring to make, well, we have an O-ring underneath here, right? So just leave him with the other O-ring. We need to change out both these O-rings, okay? So now I'm gonna take this guy out and we could take out our piston. And inside are two seals, one of them a quad ring. I think, actually both of them are quad rings on this one, yeah. So that's right. So we gotta change those out, all right? Put this guy on the side. We could take these guys out. Really no need to take them out. You could take them out, clean them. Just make sure you put them in right. All right, just like that. And now we can move forward with swapping out all the seals. I'll let the camera cool off, I'll be back. First, we're gonna replace the quad ring on the head. Now, if you have a plastic pick, preferably use a plastic pick over here so you don't damage the plastic piston or the plastic head. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna take him and we're gonna find his replacement. I lined up all my, I opened up the kit, I lined everything up, okay? So that's the old one. This has to be the new one. Okay, let's clean it. Let's make sure we're clean. Actually, I forgot to open up my grease. Remember, we always wanna grease rings. Take a little bit of grease, cover them. All right, then we're gonna take him, make sure when you put him in that he goes in, he doesn't flip over on you. There we go. So, now we're gonna take this guy here, put him on, this guy here, put him on, there we go. All right, that takes care of him. So now we have ring on the outside. Again, if you have plastic, Pick, use a plastic pick, find his replacement. His replacement should be right there. Yep, old one, new one. Do we have to clean him? Yeah, he looks pretty clean. Grease, put him in. Now, actually, we got, I believe, a quad ring and a U-cup in here, and we have to take them out, okay? And that's gonna be a little bit delicate. So grab your pick. You might need a stronger pick than this. In fact, I'm sure you're gonna need a stronger pick than this. Let's see if I can do it with this guy here. Yep, okay. So, um, grab this guy. So if you notice, he's a U-cup. U-cup has, nope, this is a quad ring. The top is a quad ring, the bottom is a U-cup, that's right. So we got the quad ring that goes on the top side on the flat part. And then over here, we got our quad R U-cup. Okay, we're gonna try and go inside, scoop him out. It might be tough on that side. Okay, I got him. Had him. I wonder what all that dirt is in there. It's like some kind of red stuff. Come on, I just had you for crying out loud. There we go. Okay. Come on. These are stiff. Now, if you notice, a U-cup has a flat side and it has a cup side. So remember, the cup side down, the flat side towards the flat side up, all right? Cool. So we took out our U-cup and we match them. So, this guy obviously is this guy here, and this guy obviously is this guy here. First, we're gonna put in our quad ring. Cover with oil. 
quad ring goes onto the top. Now fold it and try and stick it in right away, putting this part down and this part that stays up, try and tuck it into its spot, just like that. See the way it's tucked in? Now let's roll it in there. You should be able to just take the rest of it and tuck it in. Well, there's one at the seat below it, but no worries. There we go. Come on. Get in there. I just made it one little part left. On this side. And let's lift it. Come on. Get out of that other seat. Get onto the top seat. There we go, just like that. Now make sure he's not folded. He is not folded. All right. Now we want to do the buttercup. Uh, buttercup. The uh, U cup. Now the U cup again. The flat side goes on top. The cup side goes on the bottom. All right. So we want to cover this guy with grease. Come real well. Actually put some grease on the seat on the inside as well to make your life a little bit easier. So he sticks in there, or at least has somewhere to stick. All right. Now we need to make sure that the cup is on the bottom and the flat part is on top. Now this guy's a lot stiffer. So, and I mean a lot stiffer. Hopefully I can put him in before the camera overheats again. I'm having a problem with this camera tonight. It's hot in here. All right, put one side in. Just like that. Now let's force the rest down. Oop. Come on. Ooh. Now we'll be able to put them in. Come on. There we go. He's in. Yep. He is in. Next, let's put him back on the shaft. Now we need to put the piston in. So, flat side goes down. Now, you could try and do it without this bullet tool, but you're taking a huge risk on damaging that U-cup. So, that's where the butter the butter tool, the bullet tool comes in, right? You just put it on top and essentially, boom, done, inserted. So even with the U cup, with that bullet tool, it needs some pressure. So this guy, actually, I'm gonna leave him on here for now. So this guy is done for now. Let's finish up the rest over here. So remember, we had taken out the washer from the bottom and we had on the shorter side, another washer. Let's take out the washer from this side here match them and replace them quick, quick. There we go. Oh. 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 Get out. Go off for crying a lot on the floor. Decided to give me a hard time and fell on the floor. Let's find a replacement. So that's gotta be this one here. It's for the short side, and this one has to be this one here for the tall side. All right, so set for the tall side. So let's do the short side first. Grease on them. And let's put them in. Now let's do the tall side and put some grease on them. Let's slide them in. The thing is, we got to put them over this lip over here. He's got to put go into the seat after the threads, right? And here, Oop. there we go. So this guy's done. Now 
we need to clean the threads here and clean the threads there real well because we're going to have to Loctite them and torque them down. So that's not what I want to do. I want to do this. Put this guy in here. Make sure we remove any grease that is in here. Okay. Cool. And let's clean these guys here. In particular, this guy on this side. This guy's got to be super, super clean. All right. Next, we put him on here. Next, what we want to do is put a couple of drops of Loctite Red, but on the threads on the inside, right? We do not want it on the outside walls. Just like that. Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to take this guy. Short side goes in. By hand. Come on. Then use the wrench until he can't do it anymore. And then we torque him down right there, right? So now we're going to torque him down 5.7 newton meters. And a few YouTubers reminded me that. 90 degree angle for a torque wrench, or else you have to do a calculation to get the appropriate torque specs, all right? So I'm gonna go here, and we're gonna bring this guy to 5.7. Is it turning? No. Bet your old thing's turning. There we go, 5.74, perfect. All right. This part is done. Now we put it back into the upper tube. So next let's prep the rest, right? We have a seal on the head over here that we need to take out. Let's grab this guy and pull him out, find his replacement. It's this guy here, put a little grease on him and throw him back on. Yeah. Done. Now, had three tokens. I'm going to remove two tokens. I'm going to start them off with one token and then we'll take it from there. You don't have to do that, whatever's comfortable for you, but most of the people I know, they don't actually test or set up their suspension right. Let's clean these guys. Okay, now we are all set. So, number two. Okay, we're going to grab a bunch of grease. We're going to put them around the head over here. Be liberal. Don't be shy. Grease is your friend for an air spring, especially if you regularly maintain them. It is the best. Now, grease the shaft. Okay. Now put grease around this guy. Okay, a little bit more grease above. All right, now he's all greased up. And then we take a thin coat 
of grease or a little bit of grease and thinly coat the inside. All right. Then we take our head, make sure the piston's all the way to the top. Oh, I did put this on. Well, okay. Uh, we'll do it after. So make sure the piston's all the way. Actually, let's do it now. Why not? Make sure the piston's all the way to the top. We take that silver ring and we just roll it in there. Put this ring in there, just like that. And then we take our retaining ring and we pop him in. Put him in like that till you hear the pop, just like that. There we go. Perfect. No suck up whatsoever. The whole idea is you don't want the shaft to suck up when you put it in. If it does, take it all out, put the piston all the way to the top again, put it in, and then that should take care of the problem, all right? So next up, let's finish up the top. Now for the top, we're gonna to take a little bit of grease, just a little bit. All right, take this guy. Before we do that, we wanna fill in three milliliters of 20, uh, 20 weight fluid, right? So you could pull it from the little jar that you had your foam ring soaking in and just put it inside just like that. And then we close this off. And this, all right. my hands are all slippery, great. Always by hand first. Always by hand first, especially these threads here. They're very fine. One wrong move and you'll strip them. Okay. Torque wrench, 24.8 technically Newton meters, but 24 will do. Okay. So, make sure you're straight. This is going to be a little bit odd for me. It's all slippery here. Come on. Okay. That's why I hate these guys. Okay. There we go. 24.4. Cool. And our air shaft is serviced. Perfect. Outstanding. Next we work on the damper. And now we work on the damper. So to get to the damper we have to remove the lowers. That means you have to start from the beginning of the video, right? Which explains how to remove the lowers from the fork. So once the lowers are removed we have to remove the damper uh, it's one single cartridge from the upper body. Now, in this case, I have a remote version. Take a two and a half millimeter Allen and we are gonna remove this top screw. All right, and that top screw removes. Hold on to the top part. All right, top screw is out. We're gonna lift up the black, the blue wheel over here. Now watch out, hold on to the black thing with your hand. All right, because this is there's a spring underneath. It's gonna be a little bit stiff. There we go. Okay, so all that comes out. Take out the top cap, and everything is exposed. All right, as can be seen, there's nothing left in there. So this thing comes apart. There is a spring in here. We will deal with this guy later. We'll put him on the side. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is clean up any dirt from the edges because we're going to have to take this guy out. We're going to need a 26 millimeter chamferless socket just like we did on the air side. Make sure he's in the unscrew position. 
use the table as leverage. It's going to be stiff, I'm sure. There we go. Oh. All right, there we go. Boy, he was really stiff down there. I like the fact that Rock Shark moved away from this type of solution. I think Fox should do the same thing. Okay, let's get out, do the rest by hand. All right, now the damper is going to come out. One shot. There we go. So that's the whole damper as one unit. All right. So we want to clean it, take all the oil off the outside. We're working on it or else just going to make a mess for no reason. Plus, we're going to have to put it in clamps. All right. Remember to keep all the parts together on the side. So this is our damper. Next, we will open it up. Before we open up the damper, let's just finish up and clean up the upper tube. Easy to do, just like the other upper tube. We'll grab a little bit of alcohol, spray it down inside, grab a piece of paper towel. And actually, what you can do before that, just to make sure, is clean the threads, just in case there's any dirt or debris on top. We don't want to drag that dirt and debris down and potentially scratch the inside. Not that it really matters on this side. On this side, it doesn't matter at all, really. On the air side, it absolutely matters because there's a piston with an O-ring that rubs against that wall. So, this guy, switch it down there. I'm just going to take this for now, put them through. Ooh, gooey. And I'm going to take one more shot at that, since it seems to be still some greasy in there. All right. Through. And now he's clean inside. So we have the damper, right? Now, the way I look at it, there's two options over here. One, you could do a complete service of the whole damper, right? Meaning you take out the bottom and you take off the top you service the entire top there's a couple of seals in here that could be changed you could change out the bladder right uh personally i consider the whole top half optional i don't think you have to do it every you know uh every 150 200 hours or whatever fox recommends there's really not all that much going on over here as far as seals right they more stop oil from coming out it's the damper head seal that absolutely needs to get changed out. So that would be option two, where you could empty out the oil, take off the bottom, change out just the seal uh, and the, sh the seals on the shaft, fill it up with oil, put the shaft back on with the new head, put the new head back on with the shaft, uh, and then bleed and call it a day, right? But this is a full tutorial. We're gonna go through the whole thing. Ultimately, personally, this is a me thing. I think this is an option. If you don't want to change out your bladder and you don't want to have to sit here and dismantle or remove all your shim stacks just to get to a couple of uh, O-rings up here, uh, or seals, I should say, then I really don't think you have to. Maybe out there, some others out there might differ with that thought. Uh, if you do, feel free to put in the comment section below, okay? Uh, one more thing, guys. If anybody out there finds this video informative and likes it, please feel free to hit the like button. It would be much appreciated to try and get these videos out there to more people so they could see how they could service their forks. I'm hoping these videos make it out there and uh, help some people out, all right? So any help would be much appreciated. Back to the video. Okay, so next we're gonna loosen up this bolt over here and the upper bolt over here. To do that, we need to put it in a clamp. All right, so. Well, you can't really see it all that well. It's pretty self-explanatory because you're not going to be able to see the bottom one, at least in camera. What we're going to do is we're going to take a 19 millimeter and we're going to put it right at this edge on each side. 
and then turn it counterclockwise facing down. All right, well, at least while you're looking down on it, right? Top down. So, and then we'll do the same to the top. So for this one here, again, maybe if I bring it a little bit out, you guys might be able to see it. Well, maybe there. That might help. Okay, hopefully I'll get enough purchase. So we take this guy and we're just loosening him for now, right? Make sure the whole thing doesn't turn, the whole thing's turning. Gotta crank him down a little bit more. There we go. He's loose. Now we're gonna do the same to the top. All right, so this guy, we're gonna go the opposite direction. Cool. It is done. Next, we will remove or separate the shock. Now we are going to remove the damper from the vise. We are going to thread them and make sure you have a pan underneath because oil is going to come out. All right. Ooh, man, that's nasty looking. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is nasty looking. I can't believe that this was sent into Fox like a year and a half ago, I think he said. Holy cow. I mean, wait till you see what color this is supposed to look like. Not this color that I know of. All right, drain it well. Let it sit there for a bit. I'm gonna let it drain and I will be back so the camera doesn't overheat. So we're gonna start off with the top part. All right, so now we're gonna, un since we already loosened it, we're gonna completely unscrew the shaft. Keep this over just in case more oil wants to come out. I tried removing as much as I could. That's some nasty ass oil. Squeeze the bladder and try and get out whatever you can now so you don't make a mess on yourself later. Come on. I could hear some in there. Oh. All right. Let's just take a little piece of towel, put it in there to absorb what's there. Again, just so we'll make a mess all over the place. All right. Cool. Now let's clean this guy inside since we're at it. Boy, man, that oil's just a mess in there. Grab one of these guys. I want to clean all that oil, old oil out. Because it's almost like, it's almost like a tarry, I don't know, man. That's like thick, real thick. Grab a dowel, put him through, and done. He is clean. I'm going to put him on the side. Clean this up. Next, we open up the cartridge. Okay, next we want to... Uh, release the bladder or remove the bladder from the upper the lower portion right so we need to take this ring over here and press it down over the bladder this might be a little bit stiff but you'll be able to do it come on, come on. Come on.
There we go. Yeah. yeah. Done. Then release the bladder from its seat up there. Now, watch out. There might be more oil that comes out. Let's make sure. We've already had some oil come out before. No, I think I got it all. Okay. Next, we release the retaining ring. Okay, so if you notice on the retaining ring, there is a squared side and a um, angled side. We use the angled side to remove, the squared side to install. All right, so we got to get underneath it. One of these guys can work out better, just like that. All right, perfect. Take the retaining ring. Come on. And bring them down. Okay, now we have to separate the inner shaft. Okay, next we want to take out the reflow cap, right? What we're going to do, because it's always easier using a clamp, we're going to push down the rubber, right? And we're going to put this in a 10 millimeter clamp. Clamp it in there good. Make sure you don't clamp the rubber. I mean, we're going to be putting a new rubber one, but oh, I clamped the rubber. Oh. There we go. All right, so we got good purchase. Now we're going to take our 19 millimeter and we're just going to loosen it. Okay. All right. Now, what we're going to do is take it off. Okay, so this is our cap, put it in order. All right, we have the ring for the bottom. We have the retaining ring for the top. We have our old ladder, which has a ring down there. And we have our old bladder. Now, if you noticed, on this side, I'd taken the old uh, new kit and I aligned, I put everything in a row, all the seals and everything in a row, right? So this is our old bladder. We put it on the side, we got our new bladder over there. Okay, so next we go inside and change the seals. Okay, now we want to disconnect the shaft from the top part. So we're going to put, oop, oil's coming out. Like I said, there's shims out there just when I cleaned up. I'm going to put one more of these guys here. So, tie this guy down. Okay, make them tight. I want to put a couple more towels underneath just in case more oil comes out. I'm going to grab our 26 millimeter chamferless, put it on there, and There we go. Okay. We're going to take them. And we are going to pull him up as a whole. You can do this with a bladder on or a bladder off. Don't really matter. Just hold underneath so the ring doesn't fall out and everything stays intact, just like that. Boom. Okay. This guy might have a little bit more oil on him. Let him sit there for a bit. We're going to take this guy and we're going to clean him too. All right. Get all that oil. That, that old oil is like literally tacky. I'm not kidding when I say it's tacky. So I'm going to clean the inside and get that old oil out of there. To clean the inside of this guy, spray him down with a little bit of alcohol inside. Take a thin paper towel, 
cut into a thin slice about, let's say, an inch and a half, twist it, and then put it all in. I mean, I already did it one pass to give you an idea. I was going to do a two pass because, like I said, this stuff is tacky for some odd reason, like really tacky, surprisingly tacky. All right. And then just pull them through. Ta-da. And done. We will put him on the side. Now we open up this guy. So we are going to need a six millimeter. All right, inside there's an Allen. So we're gonna take him by hand. No, Stippy's gonna be by hand to be honest because this guy feels like he's down there real tight. I actually might need six millimeter. I mean the 26 millimeter on this. Ooh, wow, that was tight. Okay. There we go. Stop it. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we got this guy who has an O-ring around him. Put him there. We got this guy. Now we got to be careful because we have our shims over here, right? So this guy comes in next. Remember, he sits on top like that. So, actually, yeah, that's right. What am I talking about? I'm looking at the screen. I'm doing two things at the same time now. Let's take a towel and absorb whatever oil's in there. Before we start. Taking things out. Now, this is important. That's our shim stack. We need to remove the shim stack, but we do not want to lose the order of the shim stack. Magnet. Leave it on the magnet, all right? Make sure it does not fall off the magnet. Okay. Now, we want to remove the inside. So, this whole thing you're going to push down from the top up. Okay. So, this guy. Oop. Did I just lose something? So this guy sticks up like that. And then this guy, there's a trick to this guy when we put him back in. And then, oops, then we have our last piece. Talk about bad timing, it overheated just when I was taking off the top part over there, right? So essentially, I had removed the upper piston, the butterfly, uh, washer app, butterfly valve or washer, I think, I'm not that sure, and the top piston assembly, right? So this guy, essentially, this is where our top of our damper knob goes into, right? So this guy just stands up straight, just pop him out, right? And put them all in order. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and clean everything with alcohol to get all that old stuff out, because this stuff, like I said, is tacky, all this old uh, oil. I'm going to clean it all real well, let the camera cool off, and I will be back, and we will start replacing seals and assembly. So I cleaned everything. Everything is in order the way we took it all apart, right? So this is the head. This is the dials. This is the butterfly valve. This is um, uh, the upper piston, I believe. Um, shims are on here, right? And so on and so forth. So there's going to be a few seals we're going to have to change. First, we're going to start with this guy here. Now, this guy, of all places, has a seal on the inside. Now he's holding down a washer with a spring. So we need to change that seal, but not disturb the washer and the spring. Make sure everything goes back in the exact same spot, right? So if you can see that there, seal is right here at the edge. And he's literally holding down the washer and spring. So be careful when we take them out, keep everything intact. 
Okay. Let's leave him down. Now we need to find a replacement seal. And that is this guy right there. So that's the old one. This is the new one. Put a little bit of grease on him. And I mean a really thin coat of grease. So now we got to put him in. And this guy is a bit of a pain. So we need to make sure we tuck him in to his seat on one spot, which is right. Oops, see what I mean? That thing's going to want to come out with the spring. Great, come on, get in there. All right, so. There we go. Uh, we keep on tucking him all the way around. And the last part is always going to be the biggest pain in the butt. Come on. Come on. There you go. Get in. Get in there. Just get in there. Get in there. Make my life easier. Nah, why bother doing that? There we go. So now make sure he's tucked in. And this guy is done. All right, so that's number one. Everything is centered, everything moves, he is done. Next seal we have is over here on this ring. Okay, so we got to take him out. This you could do by hand. Put the ring down, find his replacement. That's this guy right here. Old one, new one. Then thin coat of grease. Put this guy here. And that is the last of the seals. There is no seal in here, right? That's right. So, well, actually, I'm lying. No, I'm not lying. That is the last of the seals. The other one's the clip that we're going to have to take out later. So this guy separates. Basically, this is our dial, right? Watch out. There's a wave washer in here. So, but there's only one way to put them in. So just like that. All right. Leave them there. So, but that's it. There are no other seals over here. That is it. So again... When it comes down to uh, doing the upper damper, just to change those two seals, all that work, to me, it's like questionable, man. I don't think it needs to be done. It's not like these things are constantly being, you know, just impacted like the lower seals are, right? So I personally think this is optional and you could do it, let's say every third or every second uh, full service, as opposed to doing it every single full service. The most important thing is what we're gonna deal with after, when, after we assemble this is the lower damper body basically over here. This is the most important. This guy needs to get changed out. This guy needs to get changed out and the seal over here needs to get changed out. Well, at least, well, yeah, the seal over there should get changed out. All right. So next up, let's start assembling. Actually, I did forget one seal on our top cap. Usually I would do this at the end, but since we're here. So we got this seal here. All right, so we're gonna take it, find its replacement. That one's gotta be it. And coat of grease on it, keep it fresh. And let's put them back on. Totally forgot about the outside. I was so busy thinking about the inside. I don't get in there, bonehead. Oh, for crying out loud. All right. Now to assemble. One, we need to make sure that the dial is prep correctly inserted, right? There's only really one way to put it in. And that is just like that, okay? I'm gonna leave this on the side for now. Well, actually, I'm not gonna leave it on the side. Now, the butterfly washer. One hole is larger than the other one, and we need to make sure that we fit it correctly, just like that. I, if you'll notice, I will not be able to put them both inside the other way around. I will only be able to put one, the other one won't fit. Very smart on Fox's side. So, um, Make sure we align this up just like that. Okay. Now we want to take the whole. We want to take the whole thing and basically you could do the dial first and then the butterfly valve, but ultimately you could also do both at the same time. Make life a little bit easier. You have a little bit more purchase really, and we put it in just like that. Now make sure he is seated all the way which he isn't, there we go. And now he is seated. 
that part is done. Then, you notice we have a notch over here, okay? There is a guide in there, and we need to insert this guy to follow that notch. Okay, so wiggle him around, and boom, that guy goes in. Don't knock him out, watch out. Put him inside one of these holes, actually. Okay, so now that we want to, we have it in here, we want to test it. There should be some spring to it, okay? And as you can see, there is spring. So we are ready for the next step, which is putting the magnets in, I mean the shims in, and that's gonna be a little bit tricky. All right, up next, the dreaded shims. Now, we got them on a magnet. We had pulled them up, so this is the bottom. They go down here, and behind is the top. that goes on top right now. Two options the way I look at it. I mean, that's why I like rear shocks. You could take these out with a tie wrap and put them in with a tie wrap. You can't do that with this, right? So you could either do it one by one and put them in in order to be sure. Or if you have a long, thin pick like this, right? We know this is the bottom. So we could do a scoop up, if not all of them, whatever you can first shot, right? Just like that. And then put this on the bottom and let them fall into place. Oop. This is magnetic now. There we go. Then we do the same with the remaining. Be very careful. Make sure you get them all. Screw them to the side. Pick them up, even the little ones underneath. Make sure you got them all. Now we do the same thing. And that is all of them. All right. Then we put this guy in. This guy gets screwed in. Actually, Yes, we get screwed in. We're gonna need that six millimeter, Alan. There's no torque specs to this, just snug. Don't make them too tight, all right? Just a little bit snug. So just like, I mean, obviously you can't feel it, but don't crank them down, just snug, all right? We have our bladder. We want to grab some grease and coat the outside edges and the inside. Thin coat of grease, right? Very thin coat. And put some on the outside here. Okay. So this guy goes on top, right? This part goes on the bottom. So now we want to put in our ring, our retaining clip. Oh, I should have put the retaining clip in first now that I think about it. Okay, and then we want to put this ring for the top. All right, so now we grab the shaft and the reflow cap. We're going to screw in the shaft to the reflow cap loosely, right? We're going to take it and we're going to put it in and try and slide it in all the way to here, basically, just like that. All right. So now we're going to take this whole mechanism. This whole thing should be sticking out. Why isn't it sticking out more? Did I not screw it in enough? Okay, so now we're going to take this guy and we are going to screw him clockwise until we can't screw him anymore. All right, so press down on the bladder. 
Okay, then we're going to take this guy. We're going to put him all the way in. You might need to use something to get him in there. There we go. All right. So then we have our retaining ring. Oops, let me get the other side. Let the whole thing run in. All right, make sure he's all the way in, all the way around. Great. Make sure he's in all the way around. Mm -hmm. Make life easier here. So, there we go. Anyway, he's in all the way around. Then we take our retaining ring. Now, with the retaining ring, ring the flat side first, right? So we take the flat side, we tuck him in. Tuck him into his seat, and then we pop the rest in. Just like that. He is done. So next, I took the shaft, I put it in the vice clamp. We are gonna take top part of the shock head and we are going to screw him in by hand, always by hand, as tight as we can by hand. And then we are going to grab our 26 inch chamferless head with torque wrench, 6.2 Newton meters. A little bit tighter. There we go. 6.2 on the money. All right. So he is done. Now we need to sink this guy on to its seat over here. To get this collar in its seat, what we're going to do is use the vise as leverage, right? So um, I put a different, I put a flat um, clamp, uh, clamp, uh, vice jaw or soft jaw because this one's pretty knurled right and I don't want to take the chance on scratching or doing any kind of damage so what we're going to do is we're going to invert the damper and we're not going to tighten anything we're just going to let this collar sit on the uh, soft jaws and then we're going to push down right so we're going to push down so the collar comes up until he snaps into place, just like that. Oops, he's not snapped in all the way. Hold on, let me open him up. Let's get this guy in here. And now he is done. Boom. Our lower or our upper half is rebuilt. Now let's work on the lower half. So the lower half. So this part here from here on, you should always do in the 200 hour service. What we just did, in my opinion, that is optional. Really, for those two seals to go through all that headache, I don't know. I, I personally don't think you need to do it for every, you know, whatever 150 hour, whatever long term Fox service is, right? 150 hours, 200 hours. So, but the lowers, the oil with the lower seals, absolutely you should do every single time. That will benefit you because this wears. And when it wears, the shaft wobbles, right? So, for starters, what we're going to do is we're going to take the seal, we're going to bring it pretty close to the top over here, right? And then we're going to take a little bit of alcohol. We're going to clean that shaft well. I mean, well, yeah, this shaft well, because we're going to put in the soft jaws on a 10 millimeter opening. Okay, so there's a seal over here. We want to take out that seal. Oh, come on. You're going to give me a hard time. Okay. And we're going to need to replace it. So let's find the right one. And that's got to be this one right here for sure. So that's the old one. This is the new one. We're not going to put this on yet. We need to take this off. And to do that, we need some heat. So we're going to put a little bit of heat. It's 
That's all you need. And then we grab our nine millimeter. Oh, why doesn't it go in all the way? And we open them up. This is our rebound shaft. And there is a seal we are going to have to change right there. All right. And this is the head. So we take out the head. Obviously, we got a replacement head here. Okay. We'll put the old one on the side. So we can do is clean this up. Put a rag in or put some cloth inside. Try and clean the threads well. Okay, so now we will put on our new head. All right, now first I'll put a little bit of grease on the inside. Let's coat them. Now, again, you could try and do it this way, or I say this way, but if you do it, you take the risk on damaging the quad ring in there, right? That's where the bullets come in. So we take the bullet and we slide them on. Done. Nice and easy. Okay. Now it's one more time. Clean any grease that's on there. And next we'll work on our shaft. Okay, so now we take the rebound shaft. We have a seal on this side. We need to take this seal out. Be careful, this is a stiff seal. and <laughs> You can stab yourself. Mm. Mm. There we go. All right, and we find its replacement. And that is this little guy right there. Right, yep, that's the old one. And we grab the new one. Here's the new one. Let's clean the shaft. Okay. A little bit of grease on the seal. And watch you don't tear them putting them on. Line screen. Oh, wow. That was off screen. All right, take him, flip him over here, and he is in. Now, this is our rebound knob. Take him out, watch out, there's a bearing on the inside. We're just gonna take this apart, and grease it, and put it back together. Watch out for that bearing, all right? So, again, watch out for that bearing. There it is. So let's take this, clear all the old grease out of here. Clean the inside in here. Oh boy, that's not going to be easy. Yes, it is. Where there's a me, there's a way. Okay. Dirty. Now, take some grease. Put grease on the shaft. Take the bearing, put it in the hole. All right. We screw this guy back on. We will hear the clicks. So screw them in all the way and then take them out a quarter turn, basically. One click. All right. There we go. Take out the old Loctite. Wow. Look at that. What kind of Loctite was that? 
Okay, make sure it's all gone. We don't have any flakes in there. Okay, and our shaft is ready to be put on. So now we put it back together. We're gonna take a little bit of Loctite and put it on the threads inside just like before. So drop, there we go. All right. Then we're gonna take our rebound rod and we're gonna put them in, make sure we don't touch the Loctite. There we go, all the way down. We're gonna screw him in. Then torque wrench with a nine millimeter in this case. 3.4 newton meters, not much. The only thing is mine won't go all the all the way in, which sort of sucks. Nope, I might not be able to do it because the head is too high on this one. Nope, I got it. 3.4, boom, done. Our rebound shaft is finito. Okay, now time to put everything together and bleed. I'll be back. Oops, wait, hold on. We forgot our last seal, the first one that we took off that we didn't put on right away because we have to apply heat. There we go. We have to take out this last Teflon seal. All right, so we're gonna swap them out, split them apart, he's a split ring. That's the old one, and this is the new one. A new one's gonna be big, don't worry about that. We'll fix that later, right? When we go to put this guy into the upper body. Start the bleed process. We are gonna take our shaft, the upper part, put it in the vise. Now we need oil. Five weight is what we need, okay? Two ways we could do this. Open this guy up, this is a brand new one. Yep, another new one, forgot. Let's open this guy up. Now to make life easier, we just pour this guy in here. Look at the color it's supposed to be. Do you remember what color it came out? Yeah, world of difference, say the least. Yeah, where's the cap? There it is. Crying out loud. All right, put that guy there for now. Actually, before I make a mess, this guy in here. So what we're going to do is we are going to fill him. And while doing that, squeeze on the bladder. Try and remove as much air and replace air at the bottom with oil from the top. Uh, oh shit, too much. Do not want to do that. Grab the towel. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like making an oily mess. Try and avoid that at all costs. All right, so, boy, man, this oil always stinks, this R5. Now, squeeze on the bladder. Massage it. Okay. Surprisingly, not much bubble coming out. And there are some little ones. See what I mean by little bubbles coming out from the bottom? 
they'll make their way up. The more we do now, the less we have to do later. Okay. So now we are, you know, what we're going to do just in case, because we are going to make a bit of a mess. Let's take a towel, put a hole in the middle, put them through here, tuck them in the holes best you can to keep them there. Okay, then we're going to top this guy off. Make sure to get rid of any bubbles that are on top. Overflow them and bring them to the side. There we go, just like that. No bubbles. Less bubbles in there, the less we have to worry about later. Okay. Then what we're going to do is take our shaft, put the piston just about all the way down at first. We're going to try and do this two sh like one shot basically. Hold on to the Teflon ring, make sure it goes all the way in, then push the piston down. I'm on a weird angle here. Um, push the piston down and then screw them in by hand as tight as you can, right? Just like that. Oop, watch out. That's where we got to watch out with this Teflon ring. I don't know why they sell it like that, to be honest. Fill them up. And yeah, just like that. Screw them down. Tight as you can by hand. Then we're gonna to have to torque them down 6.2 newton meters with a 19 inch crow's foot. All right. 90 degrees. And this should do it. Yep. Whoop, 6.5, a little tight. Cool. This part of the bleed is all done. Clean up the shaft best you can, and now we will go in for the final bleed. In order to bleed, we need to take out the dial, right? Now, inside here is a really, really small clip, okay? A uh, little C-clip. So, if you notice in here, I don't know how clear it's gonna be in the camera, but this isn't perfectly round. There's like indentations, essentially, and those indentations are, you could, so you could stick something real small get behind the clip and pop it out. Now, what you wanna find, and I wish I looked for that first, in fact, I'm gonna take it out and look for it right now, is where the clips meet, basically. Again, it's a C-clip, right? So for instance, the tips of the clips are here. So we're gonna face that away from us, and then we're gonna go behind in that little indentation area and pop it out, okay? So that's gonna be the easiest way to do this. I wish they had a better solution, but is what we got. So the two tips meet there. All right, hopefully you can see this well on camera. Seems sort of centered. I don't know how clear it's gonna be. It's really small stuff and I just moved the camera. Sorry about that. Now, one thing that I also do is use a magnet. So it could catch the clip, right? So I know, great. I know that the two tips touch over here. So I'm gonna go behind and there should be a bit of a space in order to get behind the clip. Make sure you wear glasses on this. You do not want anything, safety glasses, you do not want anything popping in your eyes. All right, get behind it. Now, lift. Oh, I got lucky. There he is, magnet didn't catch him. But you know what, now that I think about it, we have a replacement anyway, so we don't even need the magnet. Cool. So now that this guy's out, we can pull him up, right? Now, the only thing is, we might need a plier to pull him up. And there is a bearing in there. So let me go get a plier. So I don't think I mentioned this in the previous tool. So there is a bearing inside. Just pick him up slowly and watch out that we don't lose the bearing. All right. And there is a seal in here. There's the bearing. 
So we are going to change the seal. Let's <coughs> we lost the bearing there. Just when I told you guys not to lose the bearing. Okay. So, and there's something, there's something in there. No, that's just a reflection. So there's a seal here. We need to change the seal quick, quick. Is it me or do I say quick, quick a lot in these videos? Okay, come on. Come on. Oh. These little seals sometimes are the worst. There we go. Uh, this guy is evident. It is this guy right here. Put a little bit of grease on him. And we're going to put him back on. Come on. rubber gloves they just don't mix come on get in there come on and come on crying out loud there we go there we go so this guy's done right so we have a spring in here and we have the ball don't lose them right let's leave them on the side so now what we want to do is grab our syringe all right and we're going to put our syringe over and completely cover this whole thing all right first we're going to start off could you see that well on camera yeah hopefully let's fill this guy up a bit and what we're going to do is use vacuum and pressure to start bleeding. Hopefully you guys can see that well. We're gonna lift the rod up and down and push out all those bubbles. And then we're gonna pull in oil. And we're gonna do that over and over until all those bubbles are gone. Let us sit there, let them come up. Give it some time. This is going to be somewhat time consuming, but the more effort you put here, the much better off you will be, especially in the long run. So if you're going to waste time, definitely waste time over here. See what I mean by bubbles? Lots of bubbles. Okay. Yep. The only thing is, I don't know how long the camera's going to last. It's getting hot in here right now. I'm starting to get hot, which means the camera's frying. Squeeze the bladder. Let all those bubbles float on top before we bring them back in. Okay, I'm gonna keep on going. I'm gonna give the camera a rest, all right? All right, I'm pretty sure I'm there. So again, the goal here is to remove as much air as possible. Now, Fox Forks suck for bleeding, in my opinion. Rock Shocks is just a much better solution. Plain and simple, I don't care what anybody out there thinks. So the goal here is, again, we wanna fill up, let, <clears throat> let it naturally pull oil in, push out air, bring the shaft up, and then squeeze, right? And when you squeeze, if you see air bubbles coming up, do not let go of the squeeze. You gotta make sure that you're squeezing until those bubbles reach the top. Because if you don't, vacuum is gonna immediately pull them back in, right? And they'll just keep on shaking up and building up in there. So right now, if you could go five times, right? Without seeing bubbles coming up on the last bit, right just like that squeezing it and you see no bubbles coming up then you are good to go okay now this is can be time consuming if you're going to invest time this is the place to put it because this will give you the better experience removing 
as much air, if not all the air possible. All right, guys, it's tedious, but it is worth your while, in my opinion, at least. You should be able to go through a whole season with a really smooth damper. Yep, so I'm not seeing anything. I haven't seen a bubble in a while, actually. So this thing is bled. Now let me reposition the camera so I can show you something that we need to do since this is a 2018 fork, I believe. So since this is a 2018, I believe 2020 and prior, at least 2016 to 2020, when it comes to uh, bleeding, we don't close the shaft fully filled with oil, bladder completely um, relaxed and fully extended uh, rebound shaft, right? We need to bring it up three inches. So what we're gonna do is put a mark, doesn't have to be exact, grab a marker, just put a little mark on the shaft, three inches from the seal head, right? Right there, let's see, yep, give or take. Cool. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to bring it up to that mark. So that is three inches right there. All right, now let's get back to the top. Now we're gonna take off, watch it doesn't pop on you. Oh man, always makes a mess. I swear I got such a crappy system. I'm sorry, it's just a crappy system. Rock shocks with the syringes, with the syringe, it's just a million times better, I'm sorry, but it is. So, now, we changed our seal. We want to put, there it is. We have a spring in, so this is our dial essentially, right? There's a spring that goes in the hole. What we're going to do is put a little bit of grease in that hole. It would help if I actually put a little bit of grease in there. In that hole, in order to hold the spring and to hold the bearing. So we're going to take the bearing and we are going to put it in just like that. All right. Then we're going to top off. Come on. We're going to top that guy up completely, right? Then in our kit, we have a new C-clip. Put that on the side, we're gonna need that. So first, what we're gonna do is, the long part goes on the bottom. We're gonna take this guy, we're gonna put him in, make sure the ball bearing, oop, the ball bearing fell out. Okay, let's do that again. Ah, uh, do it again. Put a little bit more grease on that bearing. All right, so now again, we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna put him in, we're gonna make sure that sure the bearing goes in this time. There we go, just like that. And sink him all the way in, okay? And then we're gonna grab that C-clip. And we are going to put him in. Not fun, but he needs to go in. Where is that little screwdriver? Oh, there it is. So, we're gonna take him, put him in one side, and then pop him in the other side, just like that. In it, in it. There we go, that's one side. And now, uh, ah, crying out loud. Okay, come on. Take him and boom. I have him with the other side. Pop out, not the other side. Pop out. Come on, get in there. Get in there. Get in, dummy. Come on. There we go. And he is in. Camera overheated again, but basically I was just saying clean out the oil from the inside, right? So now 
If you remember, we had lifted the damper shaft by three inches. Now when we extend it all the way, you will see this will suck in. That's what you want for these versions, okay? You don't want them to over puff up, right? So as opposed to what I was told by Fox, I think it's 2021 or 2022, it sort of changed. So, but then again, these are a little bit different inside as well in those models. So this is good. And basically cycle them. If you hear noise, I don't hear a thing. Like nowhere whatsoever. So we should be good. Cool. So now it's time to put them back inside, right? So we're gonna put a little bit of grease just on the threads. All right. And we're gonna take them. And we're gonna stick them inside. Always thread by hand first. Always by hand first. Great. Always by hand first. Come on. Okay. I'll take this guy. Oops. Okay, so we'll stick to it there, and then we will take our torque wrench, 24 newton meters. Put him on there. Make sure he is straight. And come on. 24.4, supposed to be 24.8, that's good enough for me. Cool, so our damper is in. Let's take this home. So we had already prepped our boots, right, our lowers. We had cleaned it thoroughly, soaked our rings. Now it's a question of assembling it and attaching it to the upper. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our newly soaked rings. And we are going to take them and we're gonna put them in their seats without trying to make too much of a mess. So that's one. I swear to God, this stuff is like syrup. It's amazing how different the viscosity is than the stuff you put in rock shocks, forks. <clears throat> All right, let's clean our fingers or we get this stuff all over our face. Clean that up and close this for now. We are going to use that in a bit. So now we have our rings. So what I do is I take out the metal springs to protect them. Okay. And we have our tool. So again, this helps you put in the wipers into the lowers without damaging them, right? So we're gonna put a little bit of grease on the outside. This is basically to make it easier to put in and take out later. And also protect the rubber a little bit so it doesn't dry out. And we take our tool, put it in like that. So this part here goes in, right? Now, sometimes you could put them in by hands. With these things, with rock shocks, usually you can, but with Fox, not as easy. So we're going to give it a few good taps. And we don't want to put it below. We, we don't want to sink it below the edge, right? We want to put it parallel or even. So basically, just like that. In fact, one little tap will do it. Yep, perfect. So now we want to do the same for this guy here. We're going to take him, we're going to put him on, put him in, and tap. And 
Boom. There you go. Make sure they're both even. The more even, the better. And these are perfectly flush. Outstanding. Okay. So then what we're going to do, we're going to take grease. And what I do is, it's, this is a concave seat in here. I try and fill up that whole concave part. Right? So I don't just put a film of grease on it. I literally try and fill it up. Just like that. You don't have to. I do that. I find it just lasts longer. But then again, I maintain, I try and maintain my forks. Well, this one isn't mine. But if you go longer periods in between, more grease is better, in my opinion. Grease is your friend. All right. Now we are ready to put the lowers onto the uppers. So now we want to install the lowers into the uppers. Now clean the outside in the back and the rear area of any grease, grease best you can. So, cause it's gonna be harder to clean it later. And this way there'll be less dirt that would stick to it. Okay. Now we're gonna take our sag ring. Do not forget to put on the sag ring. Every once in a while I forget to put on the sag ring and it's a pain in the butt having to dismantle everything just to put on a sag ring. So make sure you put on the sag ring now. And don't grease the sag ring. Ring. This is the only ring that we would say you don't grease, right? Because we do not want a tractor. So we take that and we put them over the air side. There we go. Now what I do, I don't like inserting the wipers with the springs. I like inserting those after. It's easier to put the wiper in without the springs, okay? So, reference, serial number goes in the back. Crown goes in the front, well, crown. Arch goes in the front, all right? And basically what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna slide him in, carefully, and then just try and get one little corner in on one side. A little hard doing it like this, because I can't see. Bear with me. There we go. Try and get one little corner in. Anyway. That's it. And then we get the other side. And we are done. All right? Now we can put them down. And now we could put in our rings. We might need a pick. Or since we have that two millimeter two and a half millimeter to finish this thing with, we can use that instead. All right, like for instance, clean that grease off the wiper. We don't want to attract dirt on the outside. And there we go. All right, we got our sag ring. And our lower is installed, all right? Okay, now we need to fill them with fluid. So when it comes to the fluid, for starters, you wanna make sure you have room to put the fluid in, all right? So make sure that the threads or the shafts aren't sticking out of the holes. Two, different forks require a different amount of fluid. So it's very dependent on your fork. So this is a, and the travel on your air spring on your fork, right, for Fox. So this is a Fox 34, 130 millimeter. So according to Fox, a 130 millimeter on the air side needs 10 cc's of 20 weight oil. And on the damper side, no matter 32 or 34, all fit four forks need 15 cc's, okay? So we're gonna grab the extra oil that we had in here. It's probably not enough now that I think about it. And we're gonna fill it up. We'll do the air side first with 10 cc's. So if I look here, 10 cc's is right, well, it's a lot of reflection right there. So we might have enough oil in here, actually. Hang on, it's amazing how thick this oil is to bring up in a syringe. Now it doesn't have to be exact, but close enough. 
So basically that's telling me that's 10 cc's, all right? So, air side. We take him, put him into the hole, and we squeeze him in. Sit there two seconds so it doesn't drip all over the place. And the air side is done. Now we suck up 15 cc's for the damper side. All right, we're at my 15, a little bit. Ooh, actually, it's pretty close. Actually, now it's a little bit too much. There we go, 15 cc's. Now we take 15 cc's and we put them in the damper side. All right. And that takes care of that. Now let's close this guy up before we make a mess. And then what we will do is we will compress them and make the shafts stick out. Then we will clean the oil around that area. We do not want to trap oil in between the lock washers, well, the crush washers, nor the nuts and the shaft. Okay, so then we take our nuts. Remember, we already had this one in here, this one fall out. Gotta be in there. Oh, he's in there. Yeah, so we already put the crush washer inside this one from the beginning, right? So this is the 15 millimeter, this is the damper side. Put them in by hand first. Then we'll grab our socket. Again, the crush washer's inside. When you put them in, watch he doesn't fall out. This is the air side. What the? Hold on. That's going to give me a hard time. Why's it going on crooked? Oh, the crush washer came out. Put the crush washer in first. That was about that. And then we'll screw in the nut. There we go. Oops. Grab our 10 millimeter. The other one was a 15. Do them. Ratchet first before we torque them. Don't torque them down. Tighten them down all the way. Try not to make noise. All right, let's try to do this quick before we overheat. Okay, then we grab our torque wrench, 5.7 newton meters for both. Put in here, 5.87, not too bad. I can live with that. Okay, then we grab. 10 millimeter. Just gonna be a little bit more careful with this one. Five point seven seven. Good enough. Good stuff. Then we take our rebound. We need this screw to sit inside this dimple in here. All right. So try and line them up like that. Grab your two millimeter. We know he's around here. Come on, get in. Oh, come on, man. Oops. Cameras everywhere. Stop moving. There we go. Come on. Do I got the wrong one? No, it's two millimeter. Test them. Yep, rebounds are working perfectly. In fact, I believe he was five clicks from when we first started. Although I'm sure that's going to change moving forward. So, one, two, three, four, five. Fill them up with air. Memory serves me correct. I believe I was at 97. 
Although I'm sure that's going to change slightly because I took out two tokens for him. I'm not screwed in all. I'm not screwed in all. That tricked me. There we go. Now we're screwed in all the way. Oh, I do have the bigger pump. I have the wrong pump. I like the one with less range better. So put them up to 50. Basically every 50 PSI, loosen them and compress them to balance out the chambers. A little hard to do that here. You'll hear the squishing. That's the air escaping one side to the other one. There we go. That is done escaping. Oop, screw me in. And now I'll bring them up to 100. Or at least close to 100. A little bit more. I'd say that's close enough. All right, that air escaping is coming from the hose. Don't worry about it, it's not coming from the shock. And if memory serves me correct, rebound was five clicks. One, two, three, four, five, and compression was all the way open, which is where we are at for both low speed and regular compression. And put in our cap. And ta-da, we are done our fork is completely rebuilt right again guys this isn't a hard job the lower is super easy just do them every 50 hours you are doing yourselves a favor trust me you're gonna love it it's just once you get used to it the lowers are real quick in fact you don't even need to take the fork off the bike to do the lowers i do them on the actual bike now you need a rotatable bike rat stand but ultimately you could do them on the bike Sure, the reality is you could turn the bike upside down and do it. So um, do the lowers for sure. And in all reality, even the air spring when you do the lowers isn't that much extra work. If you have the extra time, do the air spring. As for the damper, I believe that the upper portion of the damper is optional. I mean, really, how often do you have to change out the bladder? And there's only really two seals, three seals, if you include the one on the dial up here, right? And it's not like those seals go through massive travels like, the seals inside the damper the lower damper yes that definitely keep up with do it every whatever but depending on how much you ride what kind of terrain you ride right conditions uh you definitely want to keep up with that damper at a minimum i would do it every 150 probably every 200 in there right but minimum every 150 change the oil put in the new seal head and it'll work a lot nicer for you so, and again, not all that difficult. It's this part over here that gets a little bit more intricate, basically, right? There's a little bit more detail to pay attention to, and it makes the job a little bit longer. The reality is the lowers you can literally do in, in no time. Once you get used to it, you can do it in no time flat. I mean, no more than 10 minutes, you should be done. This guy over here, literally within 10 minutes, you should be done with the air side, especially if you're not going to replace the seals. I mean, if you're not going to replace the seals, at least less than 10 minutes to actually just grease it, regrease it, or take out the old grease, put in fresh grease, and basically put it all back together. And even the damper, I mean, this is real quick. It's the bleeding that takes the most amount of time, right? I mean, especially Fox, their bleeding process, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of it, but it is what it is. Um, so it just takes time. Just be diligent. Make sure that you do 
not give up on holding those tubes when you see bubbles coming up. You don't want them to go back down and then have to deal with them all over again, all right? So as far as maintaining your first few rides, you are absolutely gonna get, as you can see over here, grease on the outside. Stay on top of keeping them clean after the first few rides until all this grease from the inside makes its way out. Well, not all of it, but a good chunk that wants to come out will come out and you don't want dirt attracting to that, right? Going in. So you definitely just, after every ride, clean your stanchions over here for the first, let's say two, three, maybe four rides, and then you're good to go for who, who knows how many rides, right? So, if you like the video, please press a thumbs up, share the video. Um, if you dislike the video, please just give it the finger. If you um, subscribe in order to see more videos, I got more videos coming. I got more forks. I got more shocks. In fact, I got a few shocks over here right now. Um, I got more coming and click the bell. Bing, 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 bing. In order to uh, get informed of new videos coming out. All right. Until then, hope all is well with everybody as always. And we will talk to you soon. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.